Hello dear ones, it's Alice. Well, I went for two walks today out in the beautiful mountains and nature scenes. And uh, I, I was able to, I had some talks with the nature spirits, which is always a lot of fun. And uh, so I happened to have a few marvel, marbles, cat's eye marbles from the uh, dollar store. And uh, I was able to place them where the nature spirits asked me to place them in four trees. And uh, I had a, an amazing conversation with the first uh, nature spirit that I, I gifted with a marble. Uh, I was leaving to go back to my walking group and she, and she showed me a picture of herself. She was sitting with her arms crossed and her, and her legs crossed on top of the marble. <laughs> and she was saying, I'm guarding my turf. <laughs> and there were five or six nature fairies that came around from the other trees around there to look at her beautiful marble. <laughs> so she was making her plans. <laughs> And so that was a lot of fun, just a ton of fun. And so that's not really the topic of my talk. So I placed my last marble in an old oak tree just now, next to an oak tree that has seen a valiant, bright, tall, majestic days, and that has actually fallen into several parts. And now there's just one part left that's growing. And I had a talk with that one blessing its days. and thanking it for serving Earth by being here. Um, I might include a little video of that. And that is also not the topic of my talk. I wanted to talk a little about a story that someone told me months ago. Uh, she said that there's a type of um, primate that uh, is like a chimpanzee, I think she said. And it lives on one side of a great river. And this particular primate um, has no warlike instincts. And so across the river, which is apparently too wide for them to, there goes Mr. Raven. Hi, dude. Hi. They don't much like talking to me. They like talking to each other. They think humans just offer um, noise interference. <laughs> so, anyway, so on the other side of this great river, she says, which is apparently too wide for them to swim across, is a group of warlike chimps. That's the story. And so um, there have been stories about uh, scientists looking at what it is that makes this one primate unwarlike and the other primate warlike. I think with a notion of like gene manipulation so that people would become warlike. I mean unwarlike, <laughs> less warlike. And so, but I have something to say about that that's not three-dimensional, it's not from 3D space. It seems to me like this story is a metaphor for the dimensions. Okay, so you could think of the place where the warlike chimps lived as three-dimensional earth and the river between them as the fourth dimension, the dream time realm. And on the other side where there is no war and where there's harmony amongst all the primates, that place is the fifth dimension. And you know we're there now and all we have to do, all we have to do is in, our, in the great power of the, and majesty of our hearts, we decide to switch to that dimension, cross that stream of the fourth dimension, and find ourselves in a place of global harmony. So, Well, so, this is the scene of the majestic tree, a beautiful oak tree that has fallen down. It had a a wonderful place, a vantage point in this valley. It is, and so it, it looks almost like it's completely passed on. And of course, it, in passing on, it offers great value, a nutrient value and homes 
for many animals and insects and uh, like that. So it's not like its passing is in vain, but it was such a huge tree at one time, that's the thing. So one thinks of past grandeur. And you can see here where right here that was where the tree was. And then all of this, oh, I guess there was a fire and it, it, it um, destroyed the, the root part of this big part of the tree. And apparently over here too, because they're over on this side, there's one um, big branch and then over here, there's another huge branch that is passed on. See? And then over here, the smallest branch that was left fell down. And then it, it grew up little sprouts that grew into quite a sizable tree here. And so when you look at it from far off, you see what we have here is another oak tree growing. Kind of cool. So um, I was talking actually to the tree that, that's still alive here and it was mourning the loss of the rest of the tree. It was saying how once it was so grand and so huge and uh, almost uh, and it reached up to the sky it said and uh, now there was so little left of it, you know. And it said it had lost hope because it missed the, actually the rest of the tree, it missed it. Uh, the, like the leaves and the trunk and all of it, it missed it. And so it, it said that the Deva had told it that it was soon to pass. But I just, I had a feel for it and I just so, I don't, you know, the Deva knows best for all of the plants in the forest and all the trees and all of the animals. But nevertheless, I stood here for some time blessing this, this very courageous uh, sapling that sprouted up from, from the remains of what was once grand and great. And I, I said to it, you know, why not relate to this tree over here? This is a beautiful tree that you can relate to. And the Deva broke in and said, you know, I know my business and I know the timing of the tree. I, I know the timing of all things here. And please don't, please don't interfere. So I thank the Deva and I thank this beautiful tree. And I th thank the cycle of nature that allows all of us to come and make a contribution to this great planet Earth and then go on. Well, everybody, take care until next time. Glad you're here now with me and with all humankind in this cycle on planet Earth. And I know that your contribution, like the contribution of this wonderful oak tree, is going to be absolutely magnificent.